So question seven, which prepped it up here to start off with. Let's just read it through. So it says a pond contains 20 tadpoles, of which F are frog tadpoles and the others are toad tadpoles. Okay, so I'm already thinking this. I'm already thinking uh, F over 20 is the probability of picking out at random a frog tadpole, tadpole and a toad tadpole would be, well, T over 20, but you need an expression for T in terms of F. So the rest are essentially 20 take away those F are your T. So that's the expression for the toad tadpoles. Now it says, if 10 more frog tad tadpoles are added to the pond, the probability of catching a frog tadpole is doubled. Okay, so you could obviously do this by some trial and error, but um, let's try and do it by setting up the structure of the, the mathematics. So if 10 more are added, so now we don't have F, we have F plus 10, but our probability of picking out a frog one now becomes um, out of not 20 anymore, but out of 30. This is now 10 more um, tadpoles in the pool in total. Now it turns out that this is not particularly interesting because uh, the setup of this question here doesn't mention the probability of toad tadpoles. So it's relating these two things together in that statement. It's relating probability originally and the probability now. Um, and it says, if 10 more are added, the probability of catching a frog tadpole is double. So we can put an equals in here if we double one of them or the other one. Now, I'm not going to give this away because this is just a hint, but either you need to say twice this is equal to this, or you need to say twice of this is equal to the other side. And I'll let you figure out which way round it should be. Okay, but you're going to need a times by two on one of them to make those two things equal. And then you can solve them. You can solve it and it should turn into a linear equation. You can uh, do your cross multiplication. Oh, and you might have a two there, or you might have a two in front of all of this instead. Okay, so uh, you can go ahead and solve that. You have the skills for that. Okay, let's just take out, let's look at the next question. And so question eight, it's a really nice question, this one. Okay, so it's about a dartboard in the shape of an equilateral triangle. Um, and a, a dart is thrown at this board, and it, we assume that it hits the board, and it's it's thrown randomly at the board. So we can assume that, I think this is a sort of a, a fairly uh, big assumption here, but we're assuming that it hits here with equal probability of hitting right in the center. So, it's, but it definitely hits inside here. So that's kind of already quite a theoretical question, to be honest, um, because obviously if you were throwing something at a board, there'd be a higher chance that you hit the center than the outside if you're aiming for it. Right, okay. So um, let's have a look then. So it says, uh, given that tan, is e tan of 60 is equal to root 3. OK, um, so these are our um, trig ratios. In fact, um, sine and cosine and tan of 30 degrees and 45 degrees and 60 degrees all have special ratios. Um, Anyway, I'm not going to go into that just now. They're just giving those to us. So tan of 60 is equal to square root of 3. And sine of 60 is equal to root 3 over 2. Okay. So what I do here to start off with is just divide this up. So I need to somehow work out the area of this, but we have no measurements at all compared to the area of the whole thing. So um, I've got to kind of say, well, one of these measurements is x, and it's going to work whichever one you choose, but let's try and choose the simplest of the measurements to be x. Or you could choose it to be 1 if you wanted to, if you wanted to say, well, I'm just going to make this thing of size 1. Now, you might decide that the whole of this is of size 1. 
Or you might decide, it, decide that it's of size X, so it can be increased or decreased. We don't know what it is. But from my point of view, I'm going to choose this to be X or 1. Um, I say 1 because we could scale it down, but this is kind of just a general option, just to show that it works for everything that we choose. So I'm saying that this is my X, and the reason why I'm choosing that to be X is because then I know the area of the circle is pi X squared. So that's, that becomes really simple. Right, but that, then I need to look at the area of the total shape because we're going to try and work out the probability of the dart hitting the, the, um, the circle inside this triangular board. So we need to do essentially the circle area divided by triangle area. Okay, that's what we're looking to do. Now, the circle area here is easy, it's pi r pi x squared, pi r squared, pi x squared. So we basically need, um, we're going to need to find the area of the triangle. And there's lots of ways of doing this. Um, but the way in which I can see how to do this fairly quickly is to divide it up, well, kind of like this, okay? If I put two extra lines on there, then I've got lots of right angles because that's a circle th theorem. The uh, tangent uh, is perpendicular to the radius, and the outsides of the outside lines of the triangle are all tangents to the circle. So here we go. I've got this kind of kite shape here, but because I can see that they're talking about trigonometry, trigonometry deals with triangles. So I'm going to split one of these kites into two, just a bit neater. Now I've got a right-angled triangle. Okay, so in that right angle triangle, you can see that I've got X here. And I also know that this is a third of a circle. So this is 120. So this must be, and this must be 60 degrees each. So that's a sixth of a circle. So this is my 60 degrees. And now we can see where 10 of 60 equals root three comes from. Because uh, if we want the opposite length, this length over here, then we can use tan. Remember, tan formula triangle. If we want the opposite, we do two things at the bottom times together. Okay, so the opposite here, an expression for this, okay, so an expression for this would be tan of 60 degrees multiplied by our adjacent length, which is x. So that's going to be our expression for this. Now, um, we're pretty close to finishing this because um, we now need to work out the area of the entire triangle. Well, the triangle is built up of these shapes here. These The full triangle is built up of many of these shapes. Now, there are different ways of doing this. We've definitely found this length. Okay, we found this length now is tan 60 times by x. You could potentially work out the full length here. And maybe you know the formula um, for the area of a triangle being uh, a half a b sine c. Maybe you don't know that. We're definitely going to come up to that later on. But you can research that if you want to. It's an alternative formula for a triangle. But actually, the easier way of doing this is to say that the uh, the triangle is built up of six of these triangles here. You can see that if I divide it up. Here we go. We've got dividing it up now into six of the same size triangle. So if I can now work out the area of this triangle over here, and I've got a base and I've got a height now, and if I times that by six, then I'll get an expression for the area of the full equilateral triangle. Then there's only one more step to go, and that's to do the area of the circle divided by the area of the triangle. And you should see that your x's will cancel there. Okay, guys, well, um, that's all my hints for that one. So uh, thank you very much for listening, having a go at these questions. Hopefully you get them right. Otherwise, um, discuss with me on the meet.